guys, in this video we're going to take a look at another set of examples. These ones are a little bit harder and they all are going to require that we use this limit. And I'm also going to show you kind of how you know that you have to use this limit. So the four problems that we're going to go through in this video, the, these are it. So if there's one that you're looking for, of course, you can just scrub the video to find that. Uh, alternatively, um, you could also use this as a way to quiz yourself. I think this is actually a really great place to pause and just see how much of this you, you really know. And so just as a reminder, so the whole point of all of these examples, we need to use this theorem or equivalently, it can look like this. So sine of x over x or x over sine of x. As um, we're taking the limit of this as x approaches zero, this will always equal one. Okay, so without further ado, let's just jump right into this. So this one I think is actually um, pretty straightforward, but the, the thing that's a little bit tricky is that um, you've got this x over two, so this can just look a little bit overwhelming. So one thing just to keep in mind here is that just in, in general, sine squared of x is really the same thing as sine of x squared. This is just the shorthand that we use for this. So you basically are going to want to kind of um, divide up these, these signs each over one of their own x's here. So the fact that these are both squared is actually pretty nice. So if I wanted to just kind of divide this up, which, um, let's see, let's maybe, actually let, let's, let's do it like this. So let's, let's call this all sine of x over two, all of this over x, and then just square all of this. So then th this will actually just kind of shorten the amount of work that we have to do. Okay, so this inside part looks very close to what we need here, but the problem is that we've got this x over two, this needs to, these two things need to be the same. So what I wanna do is I need, to, I need to manipulate this. So let's see, first I'm going to just make this slightly easier to look at by calling this one half x like this, and then all, all of this, let's see, oops, let me write it like this. And then all of this over x. Okay, now what I really need here is for this to say one half as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going going to multiply one half by the top and the bottom. So let me just give myself a little bit more space here, just so I can kind of show you what I want to do. So I'm going to multiply one half on top and on bottom, and then this will kind of help me to work out the rest of the problem. Okay, so if I keep going with this then, I've got the limit as x approaches zero. So I've got that one half, I'm gonna break that one out. And then I've got this sine of one half x over this other one half I multiplied under the bottom. And then remember, all of this right now is being squared. Okay, so according to this theorem, as long as I have the same thing here and here, I can invoke this. I've talked about this with a lot of other examples um, in my other example video, so if that's uh, something that you want to work on a little bit more, maybe check out my other example video. But we've got one half x, I've got one half x. So what that tells me then is just the entirety of this piece here, this is going to go to one. So it goes to one, not one half. The theorem says it clearly will go to one. So this part goes to one, this part is still one half. So I can go ahead and evaluate this limit. So this is really one half times one, and I still have to square all of this. So right now I'm kind of leveraging some of my limit properties to help me do this. So now I just need to square one half, and so the value of this will be one fourth. Okay, so moving on to the next one. So this one's a little bit tricky in how you have to manipulate it. So what I really need is sine of x over x, and I do not have that, right? In fact, I, I have something with like just the wrong exponent. So I've got sine of x over x to the one half. So I don't, I don't want this, I don't need this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to manipulate this so that this will say exactly what I need it to say. And just one other thing to point out, you know that you've got to use that theorem because if you plug in zero, you're getting zero over zero. Okay, so there's several different ways that you could do this manipulation, but I'm, I'm just gonna do the one that, that's like the most direct. So I really need an X under here, right? So that I can use this theorem. So if that's what I need, then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna multiply the top and bottom by X. So you could also have multiplied um, the top and bottom by X to the one half. You'll see in a second, it all kind of works out to be the same. So I've got now sine of X over X. Okay, so I moved one of those. Here's the other x that was still on top, and here's that x to the one half that was on bottom. So this part here, I can just simplify. 
So this will be the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x times x to the 1 half. And now we're in business. So this part here, this is going to go to 1. And then the limit of this guy, as this goes to 0, this is going to be not 1, sorry, this is going to go to 0. So the limit of this whole thing is 1 times 0, so this is just 0. So that would be the limit in this case. Okay, so this next one I think is probably one of the, the trickiest ones, probably the trickiest one in this video. So if you look at this, um, it does not look like anything related to our theorem. But the, the key thing that's kind of telling you, there's, there's two things that are telling you you probably have to use this theorem. So first of all, when you plug in 0, you are getting 0 over 0. Second of all, this looks quite similar to one of our identities. This looks like the half angle identity, which I've just written out for you, but it's not totally that, right? So I've got this 1 minus cosine of 2x, but it, it's not quite there. So we're going to have to manipulate this to at least get it to where we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, let me just pull this 1 uh, over x out. And now I can just focus on this 1 minus cosine of 2x. Okay, so what I need to have happen here, I really need a 2 underneath, because if I can get that 2 underneath, then I can bring sine into this, and then, and then we'll be good to go. So I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2 here. Now, I really just need this 2 to slide under the bottom of this. So this other 2, I'm just going to bring it over here. So hopefully that makes sense. So... Okay, here's how this is going to look. So the, the two that's on top, I'm bringing it over to this part. And then this part, I'm going to bring in the two on the bottom. So it looks like that. Okay, so now I can go ahead and invoke my half angle identity and, and say that this just equals sine squared. So now I can rewrite this as limit as x approaches 0 of 2 over x times sine squared of x. Okay. So now I can see that I can actually use my, my theorem, but the problem is I only have one x down here and I have two signs over here. So I need to clear a little space. And now let's just try to manipulate this to get it so that we can, we can start to see kind of how I can use this theorem. So I'm always kind of trying to think of how can I move things into this direction and, and get them set up so that I can kind of figure out how to manipulate the problem. So. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to, so I'm going to leave this 2 out here, okay. Then I've got, I'm going to break up the sine squared, so sine over x. And now I'm just left with one more of these signs. Now, I can kind of look at what I'm, I'm left with and now make a decision from here. So this part here will go to 1. And now I, I'm actually good to go if you if you kind of check this out, right? So I have this this part here I can speak for, and then the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x, this will just be 0, right? So just to go through this. So this part here, this is going to go to 1. And then this part here, well, what is sine of 0? It's just equal to 0. So this is totally fine. As long as you don't have that 0 over 0 thing anymore, getting a 0 is not a problem. It's when you get a 0 over 0 that is a problem. So hopefully that makes sense. So as you can see, like this problem was kind of a little bit of a, of a journey in some ways um, because it wasn't totally clear maybe how we were going to do this. And maybe you even multiplied by x over x. Actually, the first time I, I did this problem, I multiplied this part by x over x, you would still get to zero, so this is just a slightly faster way to get to it. Um, so now, if I evaluate this, this becomes 2 times 1 times 0, so all of this will equal 0. So that one was a little tricky. Okay, so moving on to this next one. So this one's actually, I, I think, pretty straightforward. So let's see. Um, first things first, I'm going to just put the sine of 3x and the x together. So this is always the thing I'm trying to do is just line the sine of x and the x um, together wherever possible. And then here's kind of the part that's left over. Okay, so now just by looking at this right, I can see I need a 3 here. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 and this by 3. But I would prefer to actually move this 3 just on top here for when I evaluate this. 
So just to make it clear then kind of how we're going to work through this. So I've got this sine of 3x over 3x and then I moved that other 3 over here. And now we're in business. So this part here this is going to go to 1. That's the limit of as x approaches 0. And then this part here, so cosine of 5 times 0 is just going to be 1, so this is going to be just really the, the whole limit of this is going to be 3. So the answer here then comes out to 1 times 3, so the final answer will be 3. And so that'll do it for that set of problems, guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you next time.